four thirty to five thirty. It's right after um, taxes. There we go. So I think I think everything's running. Yeah. All right, we're ready to go. Um, so first thing we want to do is just kind of like a quick intro to Docker. Um, it's a really nice container service. Basically, has everything installed for you. You just run a command, and then it's good to go. So um, if you have Docker installed already, you can simply just run this command. I included it in the instructions on the email. And so go to your terminal. I already have it entered here. And just press enter. And bam, now we can navigate to localhost 8888. And we have our Jupyter Notebook running. Cool. Uh, if, you, if you've experienced this before, this, is, this saves you maybe like um, weeks of debugging. Or at least I've definitely spent like a week going through Anaconda and trying to figure out what was wrong with my paths and everything like that. It's a pain. This saves you time. Um, cool. So the first, we're just going to run through this like pretty simple Jupyter Notebook. It's uh, essentially a um, essentially it's the like the intro to Jupyter Notebooks, just to kind of get you up to date with everything and make sure everything's running. So the first thing you want to do is get the IPython notebook for this class specifically. So if you go to our GitHub repo, it's uh, github.com slash kaggle decal uh, slash kaggle underscore fall six, FA16. Hey. Hey, um, if any of you guys get stuck at any point, just raise your hand and uh, one of us can come help you out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to talk under like don't worry if you don't have Docker installed. You probably won't be able to get it installed during this class, or at least like you won't be able to follow along. So um, you can just hang tight or something. Hey, what's up? If you have Anaconda installed, yeah, then uh, we're just gonna get to this next step anyway. So um, if you already have Anaconda, uh, yeah, whatever whatever you have, you need to download this IPython notebook. So you can either clone the repo and then find like navigate to the specific directory, or you can. Instructions on commands on the repo really quick. Um, just. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Why don't I do that? Um, so, I'll just take... Yeah, yeah. So, to, to clone this repo, you're going to have to... I'm just going to make a quick directory. Um, and then cd test. So, the first thing you want to do is git clone. And you want to find the... the, the no, no, no. Oh, are you, no, we're talking about just cloning the repo. No, no, no. Oh, really? Is it automatically Oh, wait. That means you've probably made like a bunch of repos. What? Wherever you've been doing that stuff. No, you don't need to get in it before. So, yeah. Um, you can just get clone. And uh, if anybody's having trouble with the URL, please let us know. Oh, but, nice. yeah, go go to get clone. Go to the Kaggle underscore uh, fa 16 page. And then go to the clone or download button. And it should give you a drop down with the, uh, the link to the git repo. Copy that in. Um, type in the type in git clone, and you're good to go. So it'll make this directory Kaggle underscore fall sixteen, and then you change directories, get inside of that directory, and um, now you have all the stuff that you need. So what I find is pretty easy to do with the uh, the Jupyter notebook kind of layout is instead of having to like find a find a specific folder or something like that, um, I just I go to the, the location of the um, file we need. So like just in uh, Finder or like if you're if you're in Windows Explorer, then Windows Explorer, just know where it is. And then what you can do is go to your Jupyter Notebook, click Upload. Actually, I guess, yeah, you have to go find it. So just know, know where you put everything. Um, there we go. And uh, all you have to do now is just click Upload. Bam, it's up. Obviously, anyone using Anaconda locally won't need to do the uploading steps. You'll just be working off your local machine. Yeah, you can just do. You can just run Jup. Uh, what could you just run? You can just run like Jupyter <laughs> notebook and oh. Just do a Python notebook. Um, I have some weird virtual environment stuff. Okay, basically, you can <laughs> you can type in Jupyter notebook and that should work for you. Yeah. So, um, there you go. So now you should have this notebook in front of you. Um, if you don't, please raise your hand. We can help you set that up. Okay. Do you, you have a question or you? you? 
Yeah, yeah, it's just in the terminal window. That's basically it. Just make sure you're in the directory you're willing to put everything in. So. Okay. Any? Hey, what's up? Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, just gonna give you like a higher level understanding of what Jupyter notebooks do. So the first thing, if you have a question, raise your hand. What's up? Um, all right. So if anybody has like an has like a question that's not related to uh, setting up Jupyter notebooks, just yell out. Um, cool. So the basic stuff is the basic first step is that you want to import all of your libraries. So this includes NumPy, Matplotlib, and everything else in this specific instance. But it can include any number of things, maybe like sklearn or um, some other libraries we're going to be using. So to simply run a cell, you do shift plus enter. Hey, what's up? Okay. Um, yeah. Well, then we can we can figure that out. So. What's up? Yeah. Oh, that's 
translates it. Uh, 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 yeah, one actually oh, yeah. shoots oh, yeah. 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 I mean, you're right. Another, is that a, that's yeah. okay. It's fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, by the way, we're just going to do the mistakes. All right. So, Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, yeah, go for it. All right, sure. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not your fault. It's like. <laughs> Just always remember, it's not your fault. All right. Okay, so do you want to run it or? I mean, all of it is, is just it's just running through the functions of the yeah. cells. I mean, I can run this. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, do you want to keep helping people? Yeah. So Max is Max is gonna have to do some weird stuff. Max. You may have to change for mission I'm just gonna do pseudo. Wait, I just did pseudo. Wait. Yeah. Alright, uh, we're going to continue for now. If you still have trouble, raise your hands and like hopefully these people will get to you. If you have questions, please save them, I guess, for the moment. Or just yell out frantically. Uh, I guess I'll listen to you. Um, so, whoever has it running, we're going to start at the very top. So, the first, the first thing you always want to do in your Docker notebooks is, or Jupyter notebooks, is just import all of your libraries and your packages. So this basically includes like NumPy plus like what other thing you're gonna use. Like oftentimes it's matplotlib and everything like that. Running a cell is pretty easy. You just pre hold, press shift and enter at the same time. So there you go. And you're gonna see a star running when it's still loading and um, yeah, everything like that. What's up? There, well, there's a... If you notice right up here, there's like a there's like a little kind of arrow type thing. You can run that as well, but I I recommend using your keyboard for sure. Um, yeah. So uh, this this file is from a Caltech course that taught like um, I I think biology or something like that. It has like a quick uh, quick rundown of what all Jupyter notebooks are. So if you want to go through and read all this stuff, uh, please please do. You're gonna learn a lot. Um, and then there's also little things like how to run a Jupyter Notebook and everything like that, as well as stuff about the cells and like shortcuts you can use. So uh, these shortcuts right here are like definitely very, very useful. I use them all the time and they, they like save you a little bit of time from pressing all of these annoying um, like menu options. But um, yeah, so let's get, on, let's get on to the coding part, I guess. Actually, I'll, I'll take a step back and just run down what Jupyter Notebooks are. So essentially, they're just like some code blocks, and then there's some like text that you can write in everywhere. It's Markdown text. If you're familiar with that, it's like used on GitHub and a bunch of other places as well. But uh, the great thing is you can get like this nice formatting text and then just really place all of your code into a nice like packaged notebook to distribute to other people. So um, the first thing we want to run is very something very simple. Uh, goodbye, cruel world. Wow, like that's a, that's a different kind of hello world. Um, and so yeah, pretty simple. If you print a statement, it's going to print it out. Um, wow, that's regular Python for you. So, uh, but some of the other stuff that you can realize is that if you anything on the last line is going to be output as well. So uh, if you notice here, if we run this right here, we don't see anything about spam plus eggs. So we don't see any string that's like spam eggs. But instead, we see spam, 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 spam because that it evaluates the last line and then prints it out. So, yeah, what's up? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What's up? Um, I'm not sure if you can suppress output. Maybe. Oh, yep, it works. So, uh, yeah. Um, that, that works too. And then, so, variable assignments, fairly simple. You simply, um, you, you just like do Fred equals five plus six. Cool. Then you can output it again by just running the variable at the very end of the line. Uh, what's up? So like each, each cell is not its own independent. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. So the entire, the entire notebook has like everything else in memory. So you can, as you notice here, that this cell right here is able to reference a variable in a previous, vari in a previous cell. So you, that's the nice thing about this, is that you can just write it out in these separate cells and uh, separate functions and everything like that. Um, so one of the biggest wins that you get with using a Jupyter Notebook is that you can do all this plotting stuff. So uh, right here, 
we basically run through some like pretty like a, a very simple plot. It may look like a little bit of a jargon, but you'll get used to it as the course goes on. So simple stuff. This is like um, th this is a function that defines a linear space. So it's just evenly spacing numbers and everything like that. And then uh, it has y values as well, and that that just um, you know gives you gives you a sine function essentially. But the the key things here are that there's this plot dot figure, and then the plot dot plot and everything here. So I don't remember any of these commands. I just kind of like look back and see if uh, some some other piece of my code has used it before. I'll copy and paste it, or I'll like Google it. So yeah, I welcome you to like go back and just re-reference old code to find this stuff because it's a pain to really remember it off the top of your memory. But it's nice. You can get, you can get like a cool plot here, and um, I don't know what these buttons do, but you can do maybe do something with them as well. But yeah, the key thing is that you can plot stuff. And so you can also plot multiple things. So uh, that's just using the subplot module. Again, I welcome you all to check this out later on your own and just kind of like delve into what the code is actually doing. And once again, I'd remind you that like you should probably just Google all this anyway, or like uh, look, reference like old notebooks and everything because it's just it's just so much to remember anyway. Um, yeah. And then here you go. We can like put them next to each other. Nice. Cool. So uh, now we can get into like actually formatting cells. So this person who originally wrote the, the notebook has like a certain format that they involve, uh, that they uh, that they prefer. So that includes just like writing a bunch of documentation on your uh, functions, as well as um, I guess just for generally formatting everything. I think a good key thing is that you are able to like separate your functions into separate cells. <coughs> Kind of jumps into it later on here, but uh, yeah, if you if you want to run help, you can get some information. Also, you can actually get the uh, the help of a certain function by writing it and running shift. I mean, and pressing shift tab, and so that'll give you like what the doc string describes about this function. Yeah. All right, and so. This is just an image. Yeah. So it's just drawing, just drawing whatever these functions have told it to do. It just does uh, just random stuff and with uh, with this like green blue color map. Cool. And then the rest of this is uh, just kind of break break process. The the rest of this, <laughs> the rest of this uh, notebook basically just goes through like proper formatting and um, stuff for like code cells and everything like that. So I guess the key things to take away are that you want to keep your code cells short, you always want to comment out, comment your code, and you also want to make sure that most of your inputs are done at the very first cell. And uh, this is this is all just for neatness and reproducibility. Like that's the that's like the biggest thing about Jupyter notebooks is that anybody else could read them. And like for this class specifically, you're going to help us like grade your stuff. So uh, if you don't do that, then it's just going to be a pain for us. And um, yeah, we we may act accordingly. So just just try to be nice to us and comment everything out. Uh, I mean, comment everything, like add comments for everything. So that's pretty much all we have for today. I will, I recommend that everybody goes home and like just plays around with the uh, notebook that I provided with you today, and uh, just try to try to break something. Maybe you, if you if you have experience with Python coding before, uh, just go in and just type in a bunch of functions, like add in some previous program you may have made in the past, or um, really anything else, just so you can get a little bit more familiar with the Jupyter Notebook, because this will be your tool, your lifeline, for the next few weeks for this class. What's up? Oh, yeah. so, so, like, what can this Jupyter Notebook do in terms of, like, starting things, like, on your computer? Like, for Python, uh, like, I remember uh, in 618, we had, like, these programs that were independently, right, in separate screen. Like, can Jupyter do that? Oh, in a separate screen? Do you mean, like, they, they can... You mean, like, ants per system base? Yeah, for example. Yeah, you could use any graphics package in Python if you want. I mean, kind of the idea of a Jupyter Notebook is that it's a self-contained thing where if you want to do charts and graphs and stuff, you can have them all in the same tab. So it's actually kind of the opposite of that. But I mean, we just used like TKenter for the Ants vs. SMBs project, and that would still work fine in Jupyter Notebook if you wanted to use it that way. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I guess it basically just boils down to like Jupyter Notebooks not meant to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean like yeah. the thing is like let's say you're doing data science stuff and you want to create a bunch of charts and like analyze them to figure out, you'll see all sorts of cool stuff we're doing throughout this course where you want to 
analyze some charts to see how you can tune your models. The point of Jupyter Notebook is basically, instead of having those charts being all printed out by matplotlib in separate, um, separate tabs in your computer, separate windows in your computer like Python would normally do, you have them all in this same area within this one notebook. So that's yeah, basically <laughs> kind of the opposite of what you're saying, basically. Um, I feel like, who actually was following along through Phil's thing? Cool. Okay, that's hey. good. All right. It's helping people, so it's like I can't <clears> tell. <throat> It's it's um pretty much it's self-explanatory within this like this IPython notebook. So if you're able to actually access this notebook, then um you can just run through the the text on there and uh, just do it yourself, I guess. If you have any questions, come to office hours. Uh, we're still be here for helping people debug their stuff. I'm here for another like two minutes, but um Joseph. I'll be here. I'll be here till eight. Yeah, yeah, Joseph will he be here till eight. So. Um okay, so a couple of logistical things. First of all, just so you know. Monday, we're going to be focusing on a sort of rundown of Python functionality. Uh, once again, we'll be doing a second Jupyter Notebook. And I recommend even people who've taken 6180 stuff, it's a good idea to come because we're going to cover some like basic files, file I.O. stuff and stuff that's not covered in 61A. So it'll be a good rundown of functionality that you'll be using in the rest of the course, the backbone for being able to run more interesting stuff. So that's good. 